Hognose snakes come in many different colors and patterns, which can be combined in different ways to make dozens of beautiful combinations. This week, I'll be talking about hognose snake genetics and the different outcomes that I'm expecting to see from the pairings that I'll show you in this video. Here's Uriley and Paolo. Male hognoses are usually significantly smaller than the females. Uriley is the one curled up back here in her water dish. Paolo has been super food motivated lately, so he's initially expecting a meal from me here, and I actually have to convince him that I'm just here to take him back home. I'll feed them later. I don't feed them when they're paired or around other snakes. Paolo is an example of a snow morph, which is what's called a double recessive morph. The snow morph shows both the albino gene and the azanthic gene. Albinism removes pigment and in hog noses usually results in a snake with more oranges, reds, and yellows. The azanthic gene removes all yellow pigmentation, usually resulting in a gray appearance. So when you combine both albino and azanthic visuals, you get snows. But it's not exactly that simple because these are recessive traits, so both parents need to possess the traits in some capacity. If I paired Paolo here with a wild type normal female, all of the babies would look just like the mom. But they'd be heterozygous for albino and azanthic, meaning they could make snow babies. That being said, if I paired Paolo with another albino and azanthic female visual, each of their babies would be snows. Paolo also has a normal pattern type, meaning he has a lot of polka dots on his back and his belly is mottled, it's not solid. There are pattern morphs that are co-dominant traits, meaning that only one parent needs to have a special trait like this for it to pass on to the babies. Some of the popular co-dominant traits seen with hog noses are confusingly called anaconda or conda and super anaconda or superconda. The conda morph shows a reduction in the amount of polka dots on their backs and usually a solid colored belly with white walls on the sides. The superconda morph shows a complete absence of these polka dots, just a solid colored snake except for the head markings or head stamp with a solid belly and white walls. That's what we see with Uriley here. Uriley is a superconda and she's heterozygous for albino and 66% possibly heterozygous for azanthic. This means that she can produce albino babies and both of her parents were heterozygous for azanthic, so she has a 66% chance of being able to produce azanthic babies too. This is something that we hope to prove out this season with any of our breeder boys as they are all azanthic visuals. If she has babies, we'll know if she's heterozygous for azanthic because we'd see both azanthics and snows, statistically, in addition to albinos and normals. If she doesn't prove out as head azanthic, we'd see albinos and normals only. As for co-dominant traits, pairing Paolo and Uriley should result in a clutch of all condomorphs, meaning all of their babies would have reduced polka dot patterns on their backs. The way of determining this is different than determining recessive morphs though, because it's not necessary for both parents to have the genetics for the reduced pattern for their first generation to show this trait, as it is necessary for recessive traits. This is Uriley's sister, Stheno. Stheno has the exact same traits as Uriley. Superconda, het albino, 66% possibly het azanthic. Stheno is considerably larger than Uriley and is slightly a different color. Uriley is a little bit more orange-ish in her skin and Stheno is a bit more green. On their bellies, they both have a bit of azanthic markings near their chests. Some people think that this is an indication of traits that they're heterozygous for, while others say that it's a coincidence and not a true indication. It may mean nothing, but it's still encouraging to see because it'd obviously be really cool if they ended up being heterozygous for azanthic. I've been pairing Steno with all three of our current breeder males, which again would show if she's azanthic or not in the end. Here are two of those three males, Paolo and Lorenzo. As you can see, both of these boys are snows, or albino and azanthic visual combined. There are two major differences between these two. For one, Paolo has more polka dots, and Lorenzo has a reduced pattern in comparison. Lorenzo is a condomorph. You can see Paolo's belly here and how it has a pattern to it, while Lorenzo's belly, on the other hand, is pretty solid and has white lines outlining it, which are the condomorph traits. 
Lorenzo is also different shades of pink and white than Paolo. That's because Lorenzo is what's called purple line. This means that Lorenzo's ancestors evolved to match the color of the dirt that they lived in, resulting in purple tones that would help them camouflage. This gives Lorenzo a different color and tone than Paolo. This is called a line bred trait. It's not a recessive trait where both parents need to possess it to pass it on to their children. It's more of a color enhancer. In addition to purple line, there's also extreme red, blonde, and green line hognoses. These correlate to different locations in North America. Our other breeder male is named Fed Smoker. He's an azanthic superconda, so he's completely gray and patternless. His belly is solid black with the white walls on the sides. If we paired him with Uriley and or Steno and proved either of them to be hedazanthic, we'd see half of the babies looking just like him and the other half of the babies looking just like the mom. All of the babies would be 50% possibly het for albino because both girls are 100% het albino. Meaning that if, for example, either girl had eight babies with a non-albino dad, about four of those babies would actually be heterozygous for albino. This is something that would have to be proved out in breeding that animal or by sending a shed skin sample to Rare Genetics, who I believe have greenlit colubrid testing for recessive morphs, which is beyond exciting. This is Diana, another breeder female of ours. She is a xanthic het albino, meaning she can make snows. She has a normal polka dot pattern, and if she was paired with Paolo, we'd see half of the babies looking just like her, and they'd be 100% het albino, and the other half of the babies would look just like Paolo, they'd be snows. Because both of them are azanthic visuals, all of their babies would also be azanthic. This is Bonnie Kelly, a female of ours that is putting on weight before she's paired or breeds for us. She is albino het azanthic, the opposite of Diana. If we paired her with Lorenzo, our snow conda, 25% of her babies would be snow condas, 25% would be normal snows, 25% would be albino condas that are 100% het azanthic, and 25% would be albino normals that are 100% azanthic. Again, because both parents would be albino visuals, all of their babies would be albino visuals. And because Lorenzo is a conda, 50% of the babies should be two. These two are Todd and Christine, a future breeding pair that we're raising up. They both have the exact same genetics, extreme red albino, het azanthic, and het sable. These two have deeper red pigmentation than typical albinos resulting from the line bred traits of their ancestors. They're also het azanthic, so they can make snows, but they're also het sable. Sable is a gene that darkens pigment and by itself usually results in a dark brown hognose snake. When combined with other genes, it's an incredible enhancer, but as these two can't produce anything for a few years, that's a combination discussion for another day. So this season, we're really focusing on snows. The eggs that we already have are likely going to be normals that are het for snow, which is very exciting, but a bit boring to make a genetics video about. We're still pairing three out of the five females that we brewmated to breed, as two of them just reached breeding size within the past two months or so. Hopefully we end up seeing some more eggs this season, and proving out our two sister snakes as het snow. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment telling me your favorite hognose morph or morph combo.